Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Business Edition. This is recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you want to come by and catch the show live. Before we jump on in, I will remind you, you can head on over to switchtolinux.com forward slash affiliates if you want to help, excuse me, if you want to help to support the channel. I had dinner way too close to having this uh, newscast. So anyway, <laughs> I'll have anything over here from Amazon for shopping, cell phones. Uh, Mint Mobile is who I'm recommending for cell phones these days. I switched to them myself in uh, January and absolutely love it. Technically, I think I switched to them in very late December. But uh, I have a grammar checker over here that is actually a pro privacy uh, for web hosting companies. I would recommend a couple of VPNs and some podcasting stuff if anybody's into any of that. And we're going to go ahead and start out with some good news in business. Good news coming from Microsoft. People, the end of the world is coming. It's coming. See, I can call out good news when I see it. Microsoft disrupts a botnet that infected over 9 million computers. <laughs> of course, they were all probably all Windows machines. But anyway, we had to do our deed to stop it, made our, making our product look bad. So there was a botnet affecting 9 million computers that were getting ready, apparently, to do some crazy, nefarious thing. And what happened is... They were going to be feeding off of off of several domains. Remember how the um, the I think it was the WannaCry was stopped by the guy simply registering the domain and pointing it to a page. Well, that's kind of what Microsoft did. Six million domains. That's a lot of money, by the way, people. So Microsoft actually sequestered six million domains to take a botnet off of the internet. So Microsoft and partners from 35 countries disrupted the botnet behind the world's largest cybercrime network botnet, NetCurs, has infected an estimated 9 million computers worldwide. One of the largest spam email network generating has made 3.8 million spam emails in a two-month period. Shut it down faster. At least shut down the one that keeps on email spamming me. Um, Microsoft analyzed the technique the botnet used to generate new domains through an algorithm, then predicted over 6 million domains that would be created in the next tw uh, 25 months and reported these to registries around the world so they can be blocked, preventing future attacks. So um, today's action, Microsoft, is the result of eight years of planning and its cybercrime fighting cohorts first observed it uh, in 2012 distributing over malware-like game over Zeus. Um, so that's good news. We got a big bot that was taken down. Hopefully this will uh, block at least some of the spam that we are seeing. Maybe it's those guys that have allegedly caught us on the webcams, which is kind of funny. I mean, I mean, A, I know enough about computers that if I'm going to be doing something shady on the internet, I'm not going to have a microphone and a camera looking at me for crying out loud, people. Pro tip. Um... <laughs> Also, though, I don't actually have cameras or microphones on any computers unless I intentionally are meaning to do it. So uh, I hope it's that botnet. That would be fun. Um, Yelp says it shut down 550 user accounts after discovering a fraudulent review ring. I think just Yelp needs to shut itself down. Yelp, can you shut itself down? Because I think you are a fraudulent review ring. I mean, look at the interesting... Um, case where uh, Rossman, Lewis Rossman was talking about how Yelp called him up to do like a business thing and he's like, no thank you. And surprise, 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 within one week, he had all these negative reviews coming up, which he linked back to a friend of the salesperson who he turned down. Yeah, Yelp needs to be shut down. <laughs> Um, it, or at least um, any business that chooses not to do business with Yelp should have the full right to sell, to say to Yelp, you may not list my business on your site. There's a thought. There's a thought. Um, are you listening, politicians? I don't necessarily want to close down Yelp. There's some people that like it and find it useful. There's, um, you know, jobs, employees over there. But give me as a, as a business owner the ability to tell Yelp, no, you may not list my business, period. Um, and uh, any violations might mean, hey, they need to pay me an annual salary of my business for violating my request. There's a thought. That'll clean up Yelp in a really hot hurry. Um, what do you guys think? Would that help clean up Yelp? I don't know. <laughs> all right. The average household now pays more for cable packages than all utilities bills combined. So you guys that got your data leaked from Comcast, yeah, it'll almost pay your bill for one month. So this is a report um, from Decision Data, which sounds to me like one of those companies I think should be shut down. But anyway, uh, they looked at cable bills versus all of the other utilities. 
And what they found is that um, the average household cable package was $217 per month. The average household pays just $205.50 per month for electricity, gas, sewer, water, and garbage collection services combined. Uh, can confirm. I don't even have cable TV. And the best, like the cheapest internet I can get for what I need to do at work uh, to work from my home office is $100 a month which is insanely ridiculous. In fact, that has gone up over 50, actually it's gone up about 100%. I think it's like 85% since the beginning of last year where I was paying $60 a month. And then it's like, we're going up to 70. No, we're going up to 80. Oh, we're going up to 97. Now it's up to 97.50. At some point in time, maybe somebody needs to step in and be like, all right, Comcast, you've already been given a lot of money to build infrastructure. You're not building the infrastructure. Maybe you need to cut your prices back down again a little bit. Um, so average cable package, 217, average electricity and gas, 135, uh, average water, 54, average garbage, 15. Yeah, fairly, uh, yeah, fairly, um, uh, consistent with, uh, things that I think. All right. Vermont is suing Clearview. So apparently there is a Vermont law that actually has been on the books for quite a long time that would prevent any type of data harvesting company from harvesting data from public sources. And uh, I'm not sure if other states have one such thing, but this was actually an interesting article. Um, so they're going out and basically harvesting stuff and then selling, you know, selling it to a lot of interesting companies. It's just not just law enforcement. And so what happened is they're getting sued. Let me see if I can find the spot here. Uh, Clearview builds massive database by gobbling up publicly available data from the internet's biggest platforms, including Facebook, Google, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and others, most of whom have since issued cease and desist letters telling Clearview in no uncertain terms to knock it off. These images are frequent, uh, frequently of minors, the complaint notes, and Clearview admitted in its state filings to knowingly having images of minors collected without anyone's consent. Vermont's data laws prohibit fraudulent acquisition of brokered personal information. And the state argues that Clearview's screen scraping techniques and tactics are exactly that. What it does with ill-gotten data is also a problem. State argues the Green Mountain State first issue is from a security perspective. The company's already suffered at least one data breach in which its client list, which is repeatedly refused to make public, was stolen. The second issue is privacy. Once entered into a facial recognition database, the individual loses an enormous measure of anonymity, privacy, and freedom. The complaint reads, easily accessible facial recognition data would permit governments, stalkers, predators, and con artists to instantly identify any stranger and combined with other readily available data sources know extensive details about their family, address, workplace, or other characteristics. Clearview encouraged police officers to use the tool on innocent citizens. The complaint adds, citing the media reports about their marketing techniques. So basically, Vermont's saying this is running afoul of nearly every state privacy law we have. Hopefully they sue them into absolute oblivion and require them to shut down and delete all data. But <laughs> welcome to the world. That's probably not going to happen. Well, anyone over there in UK, uh, UK is introducing a 2% tax on search engines. No, it's not for you citizens. This is for the businesses. So I don't know what this is going to mean, but basically for a company to offer a search engine in the UK, they are going to be taxed 2% on any revenue that that search engine brings in. So if you're running your own version of uh, CRX, is that the one I think you can host yourself? And you're running Google ads on there and you're harvesting in some money, you will have a 2% tax on any of that money that comes in. Of course, they're just you know, one more way to try and harvest as much data from the big big tech companies. They have really deep pockets. Look at creative ways to how to take more of their money. Um, so Spain, France, and now UK have introduced their digital services tax for big tech in an effort to address concerns about multinational corporations avoiding taxation in countries where they derive a profit without a physical preference. Till OECD comes up with the solution that 137 countries can't agree on, some governments feel that an interim solution is high on the priority list. All right. Um, GAFA, GAFA, GAFA. All right. So, um, yeah, over there in the UK, you're going to start, you know, I don't know, that might impact the economy, maybe better, maybe worse. I don't know. Who knows? Whatever. 
All right, and on to our feature story today. Amazon has launched these Amazon Go stores and then the large full screen grocery store that uh, is basically cashierless. And so now they're actually starting a business selling the automated checkouts to retailers. I'm on the fence on this one. I don't know about you guys. Let me know what you guys think. So here's my arguments. I refuse to go into a store and use a self-checkout. You want me to use a self-checkout and do the work myself that you that this machine has replaced an actual person who has to have a job? And you want me to come in and do that? I'm sorry. I want their person's portion of their salary. Give me a 5% discount, 10% discount for using the self-checkout. That'll incentivize me from using the self-checkout. But every time I go through one of those self-checkouts, I would like to leave the thing with a broken screen because those things are so stinking annoying and they don't work right. And my Lance, I work so quickly with things, I don't want to stay there and go, hey, we got a bunch of stuff over here, right? Please bag your item. Your item is not in a bag. Your item is not in a bag. There's something removed from your bag. There's something in the bag. Ah! Bleep. Please put the item in the bag. Do you want to bag this item? There's nothing in your bag item. Ah! <laughs> Order me, unicorn me. Confirmed. All right. Um, so, on the one hand, I hate those machines. But if we're cutting out all the entire checkout process altogether, and I don't have to go and, and uh, talk to a, a person who may or may not have, have uh, decent hygiene, then... Maybe it's a decent thing. I don't know. But regardless, I still wouldn't be a customer because I am not giving my credit card to the store. I'm not storing a payment system on file. I'm not going in with an account. And I'm certainly not putting the store's app on my phone. So needless to say, I'm not a customer. And I believe, um, I believe our local giant store actually has this type of system in place. Now it's not like Amazon's, you have to, basically you go in and you grab a little scan gun and you can scan gun as you put in. Um, and then, you know, it's like an honor system type thing. And then you just, you know, pay and leave or whatever. And so, um, I think our local store can do some of that, but I don't know. I don't shop at giant because it's excessively priced. So, yeah, Amazon is selling this. Uh, would you guys use this technology or not use it? Um, would you use the store if this is the only option? If there's no option to go in and use it? And would a store have the self-checkout versus the not self-checkout? Because what if I like, I'm going through, yeah, I'm self-checking out. Yeah, I'm self-checking out, all right. I'm self-checking out right on out to the door, <laughs> you know? Um, so... I guess that's that's the thing. So I don't know what to think about this one way or the other. I probably am not going to be a customer of it. I certainly won't be a user of it. I'm certainly not installing their stuff on the phone, nor giving some payment option to some place. I'm not doing that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below.